It's one of the best buddy cop movies ever. It, really a great movie in every sort of way. Let me tell you why I think The French Connection, 1971 movie starring Gene Hackman, is a really, really good movie coming up next. <laughs> French Connection is over 50 years old now. It's absolute classic. Won Best Picture and a number of Oscars at the time it came out. Directed by famous director, now famous director, William Friedkin, who you know also from The Exorcist. Two other familiar faces in the movie. Gene Hackman plays Popeye Doyle, the lead detective, and his partner is Roy Scheider. So two great and famous actors who would be famous actors after this movie. Let me tell you a personal story first. You know, I actually just happened upon this movie a couple weeks ago, I looked at my Letterboxd account. I had rated it two and a half stars. That's average or mediocre for me. I saw that it was leaving the Criterion channel. I went, okay, I'm going to try to rewatch this. I hadn't watched it in over 20 years. So what's this going to be like? Am I going to like it? And because I had done a whole study or a big study on noirs, I have a whole list of noirs on Letterboxd. I decided well, I better rewatch The French Connection again. I'd probably seen this movie two or three times once when I was maybe 10 to 12 years old, going to the library, finding VHS tapes of famous movies like Lawrence of Arabia and bringing them home to watch them and having absolutely no clue what was going on in them. That was definitely the case when I was a kid with The French Connection. Rewatching this movie, I, I can't imagine even as a 10 year old or 12 year old, whatever I was trying to watch this movie and comprehend it. I'm sure I watched it again at some point for whatever reason didn't like it, but I watched it recently and I am just was absolutely blown away by this movie. I couldn't believe how great this movie is stylistically in particular. It was so good to me or struck me so heavily upon watching it that I watched it twice in three days, and I've only done that maybe four or five times in my life. Now, I have a whole bunch of reasons why I love this movie. One, I'm a video maker, and I make pretty simple videos on this channel. There's nothing fancy in these videos, but still, I need some creative juices. And this movie, stylistically, the way it cuts, edits, it uses composition, audio, music, is absolutely phenomenal and inspiring to me. If I were going to make more videos that had more stuff in them, more fancy stuff, I would go go to this movie and mine it. I think for video makers, anybody on TikTok, anybody on YouTube, anywhere else, this movie has a ton to teach you. Any five minute stretch. Now I know the chase scene in it is really famous. That comes about an hour into the movie and lasts maybe ten minutes. But the, I'm telling you the entire movie. Any five minute part is really, really interesting, really well crafted. And so just for that reason, I think it should continue to inspire people or ought to if it hasn't. As well though, this is classic noir. It's a police detective story going after a bunch of drug lords or drug dealers and the drug dealers are trying to hide their wares in the car, for example, later in the movie. And the, the two police officers are chasing after them. And this is an amoral police story. They're not, they don't have many morals or ethics or principles. You know, they, they break laws, or it looks to me like they do. Nice. We say we stick around and give them a tail. Come on, just for fun. Give them a tail. They're in a place in time, New York City, 1970, 71, where the city is just falling apart. It's gross, it's ugly, it's corrupt, trash, and it's just a mess everywhere. This is not a pretty picture. It's definitely not a tourist ad of New York City. And I think Friedkin's vision of what the American city is here. Remember, New York City is a cultural capital of the world, cosmopolitan and financial capital maybe of the world. And yet Friedkin's vision of it is really bleak. And I think this inspired or led to a number of other directors and films, you know, depicting New York in this way. Now, maybe it was this way in circa 1971, but I'm also saying that film itself really picked up on this idea of New York as a trash heap and crime ridden. You get The Warriors, you get Scorsese's movies, Escape from New York, things like that coming out in the next 10 to 15 years. Now, stylistically, this comes right out of the French New Wave. It, it could be called the American New Wave in the late 60s, early 1970s, and the French New Wave starting with Godard and Truffaut in the 1960, 1961, and, and through that decade, this movie takes so many stylistic elements. And one of my points here is this is a stylistic leap 
an innovation on how to do a buddy cop chase movie that pre is pretty simplistic in terms of theme and plot apparently or on the surface at least but stylistically using all those great new tools that come out of the french new wave and even other new wave movements around the world 1971 here hollywood and friedkin are adapting them i'm telling you they're everywhere in this movie and this that makes this movie feel fresh alive interesting and definitely energetic and dynamic all the cutting and editing gives it tons of energy you can analyze that to death including the famous chase sequence but certainly the Godardian and French New Wave influences are here. Now, let me do something academic and a little bit too clever. I find that the, the theme of the drug lords, I know this is based on a real true story, but the French drug lords trying to smuggle drugs into New York City, I find that to be analogous to the stylistic thing going on here. The French New Wave being smuggled in to Hollywood. Okay, <laughs> The stylistic elements are the drugs, and there's no stopping them. I mean, at you know, this movie, they try to stop the drug lords. Who could do that? Drugs are always going to infiltrate the city. It's very hard for these two cops to do it by themselves. And so the style is what I'm telling you. Think about Godard, John Luke Godard. He's like the drug lord smuggling his drugs in. And here they are. It's going to be in all these movies, the different stylistic leaps and advances and techniques in movies. And, you know, this movie formally is borrowing heavily it's taken the drugs of the french as it were now that may seem too clever for you but certainly you would make this argument in academia it could fly in some kind of scholarship for what i mean you know besides the jump cuts there's a lot of loose framing a lot of borrowing from indie documentaries at the time handheld cameras moving cameras just look at the dominance or focal points you know the the focal points you're supposed to look at and they're almost always jittery, moving around, moving rapidly. And the loose framing, sometimes there's not even dominance or vocal points to look at. Sometimes it looks just the camera's turned on and they just shoot wherever they want to shoot. I don't think that's true. I think this was more planned out than it. But it has that sort of loose, improvised feel that I would say indie documentaries had at the time. And then that plus the French New Wave's elements of style and cutting and all that, you know, then you get a movie that feels fragmentary, disjointed, but very energetic. I think that's symbolic of one, the police force and what New York City is supposed to be at this time. Music is outstanding and this movie really punches you in the face at the beginning. Now, avant-garde music had been used for the last 20 years or more in movies, but this one, it's almost a tonal, especially in the opening score. The dissonance and maybe the lack of melody that's going on the score is, is somewhat coherent actually with the disorganization, all the sloppiness in the movie in terms of its style and within the frame, the characters are sloppy as well and disorganized. Popeye Doyle's apartment is disheveled and, and it's grungy looking. And by the end, that ending scene is in the dirtiest, skankiest place imaginable. So I think the music is prepping you for that and giving you this general feel of amorality, drug crime ridden city and that can't be solved and justice really can't be done very well or, or at all in New York City at this time. The main character, maybe the only character, is Popeye Doyle, very famous for the hat. Gene Hackman is a great actor and inhabits this role. I can't imagine anybody else doing this role. He's one of the best yellers in movie history. Have you ever been for Kipsy? You've been a Poughkeepsie, haven't you? I want to hear it! Come on! His, he's a powerful, charismatic performer, and he really takes on this amoral anti-hero, Popeye Doyle, really well. In fact, this is like the anti-hero's anti-hero. No morality whatsoever. The cops are corrupt. This would become, if it already hadn't been, a common theme throughout movies and TV shows up to the present day. There's all the kinds of TV shows, for example, in America about amoral or corrupt cops and focusing on them as main characters. Well, that's what Popeye Doyle is. Funny how he starts out as Santa Claus. And I find this movie to be one both very realistic on, you know, the like a documentary level, but also very symbolic. And it's really doing both well at the same time. That Santa Claus, so yeah, a policeman could dress up as Santa Claus to try to entrap a criminal. But also, what's he that trying to mean? You know, he's a fraud, he's a fake, he's going to give gifts, but the gift he's going to give you is to throw up against a wall. 
then harm you and, and you know abuse you or use the law against you something like that it's fitting the character arc of this character i think he goes through the movie and by the end he's in this trashy hellhole of a place now i say that because friedkin loves images of hell it, both the exorcist and sorcerer would come after this movie sorcerer is basically hell on earth but it's realistic as well i think that's what's going on in the french connection this sort of overall arc of the movie from dingy, grungy city to almost hell itself. And that's where Popeye Doyle is taking you and taking his partner throughout the movie. Popeye Doyle also lives in a dungeon-like environment. He's a mess of a man. And interestingly, I find this movie strange because it's got ESP in it. It seems like Popeye Doyle at one point has a premonition and that gets the whole plot moving. His premonition about the criminals being criminals. He spots them at a table in a nightclub and there's this eerie ringing sound that plays. Interesting that ESP is a factor in the movie. I have so much else to say. I think this score in part influenced Jaws to some extent. I'm not sure if those are cellos or basses playing that really low riff, but it sounds a little bit like Jaws. You think about the theme of the movie, lots of predator prey things going on, the predators chasing the prey. That's basically the whole movie. The cops being the predators chasing their prey, the prey avoiding them. Not unlike Jaws, which is going to be the same kinds of elements, the predators chasing after the prey with those low cellos or basses that John Williams events, he may have listened to this score. Last, the movie is so different than what came out even five years before it, but certainly 10 to 20 years before it. Survey the film noirs, the crime movies, the cop movies from say, you know, 1945, anything before that, of course, but 1945, 50, 55, 60. And if you were in 1961 in the United States, you could not, I think, imagine this movie being made. If they put you in a time machine and made you watch the movie, jumping from 61 to 71, you would not even know what you're looking at. That's how innovative one the French New Wave was and other new waves, and then how this movie really changes stylistically and formally so much about its subject matter. And so justifiably so, or maybe people at the time were taken with it, it won the Academy Award for writing and directing and obviously for Gene Hackman as well. And it became a very famous movie, also spawned a sequel, which is not very good, The French Connection 2, four years later. I really suggest studying the chase scene, but all kinds of other scenes in this movie. I love the cat and mouse game when Popeye Dole is trying to chase the French man onto the subway and they get on and off the subway. This is so well done. And I'm telling you, I was really taken with the movie as a video maker, influenced by it. I, I'm just stunned by how good it was. I rewatch a lot of movies from my past, from the 1990s. I saw a lot of movies then or other famous movies that I saw when I was a kid or a teenager. And a lot of times, actually, I demote them. I feel like they're not as good as they once were to me. But this is one of the rare occasions where I find this movie a lot better than I thought it used to be. So, as always, you know, with a little life experience and some knowledge of, of film history, your views of movies will change and change radically over 10, 20 years. Uh, it's happened to me. All, it happens to me all the time, regularly. So, and maybe, hey, in 20 years, my, I will change my view of this movie as well. But for now... I'm middle-aged, and I've seen a lot of crime movies, a lot of noirs. This is an outstanding, outstanding movie that I would probably will watch many, many times. What do you think of The French Connection? Let us know. What do you think of my comments? Please elaborate on them or feel free to argue. I love reading the comments that are good and thoughtful. Please subscribe to the channel. Thanks, and have a great day.